Hi guys, guess who? Praise God. Well, another weekend, another Sabbath coming up here. And uh, I had put this one off for a while, but uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and share it anyway. So, Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are so interested in our lives. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit will guide me and guide people. Those who really want to be with you, Lord, help them to seek the truth and help them to, to walk in your right ways and your, your commandments and your laws. They're all perfect and wonderful. Thank you for, in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> um, God has left the building. I know, I wish I didn't have to read off my notes all the time, but that's just the way it is. Today I, I got my new bank card and uh, I got uh, the dyslexia or a little bit of that. And uh, I had to call the bank for help. And it's like, well, they said I kept entering my last two numbers backwards. And it's like, so I had to write it down and I had to really watch to get it right. And it's like, oh, it's so frustrating when your mind, you, you cannot make your mind or your brain do what it wants to do or what you want it to do. So God has left the building, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. You'll want to write some of these down. Because some of these you might not, uh, uh, you know, they're just partial verses, highlighted verses, you know. Some people say, oh, you pick and choose the verses, but uh, I can't read all the stuff. These are three pages here. <clears throat> and Jesus said to him, this is a rich young ruler. What's the greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Verse 38. This is the great or exceedingly and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend or hang all the law of the prophets and the prophets. So he's making it very clear. It's out of love. Is what's going to make all this function and do properly, guys. It's not out of a, a raw obedience or, or works and stuff. Uh, now, Paul warns us of a couple of things. I'm going to get into this a little bit here, too. The Paul conspiracy. Ooh, Marty, you're terrible. Uh, the Lord put it in there. God put it in there, guys. You just don't want to look at it. 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Which means you're able to, if you are of the faith, by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. What would be a teaching of demons? To go out and dress like an evil person and kill everybody? No, the deceitful of a demon would be to make it so Christ-like that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference from the real thing to the, the phony thing. Paul warns us again, 2 Timothy 4.3. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. People get so mad at me when I tell them they need to obey the laws and the commandments and walk righteously before God. They say we can't do it. They say it's impossible. That's terrible. That is, they do not endure sound teaching. But having itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn from listening to the truth to wandering of of off into myths. It is. A lot of this stuff's all myths teachings, all the Calvinistic things, all the different saying, oh, we, we're back from the Wesleys and the, and the uh, uh, Luthers and all this here stuff, you know. The guys are great men, but they only went so far. And you don't worship, they don't want you to worship their teachings. The church has done exactly what Paul told them to do. This is what Paul told them to do. Now watch this, guys. You can look these verses up. Galatians 5, 13 and 14. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Boy, that sounds really good. For the whole law is fulfilled, or to do, in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love others is the whole law. Oh, what about the Father? Romans 13, 9 and 10. For the commandments, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any of the, of the commandments are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. Sounds right, but twisted, guys. He left the first one out and made the second commandment more important. You say, oh, no, 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 he's trying to teach something. Follow through with it, guys. James 4, 5. James will straighten it out. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously? That's God. He yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. The modern church has used the love for others to strip away any fear of God. Any desire to obey God, they have discarded his commandments and his right rulings. The church has stripped Jesus, who is the gift of God, that no man has earned, and stole from him the salvation that is only in and through him. Making salvation an item, or a thing, or an it, to be the gift of God. They separate. You cannot separate salvation from Christ. Salvation is a passport, or a thing, or whatever. It is Him in relationship. And you can grieve His Spirit. You can sin against Him to the point where you will shun Him away. He will reject you. Lost my place, sir. They preach what Jesus can do for you. Jesus did it all for you, appealing to their selfish needs and passions. You ever listen to Christian music? A lot of it's all about what Jesus did for me and what he can help you. None of it's honoring God and self-sacrificing and dying to yourself. I can't stand Christian music, the modern Christian music. Preaching that repentance for sin is an option and that future sin is tolerated. Because God is blinded by his own grace, which they teach is a thing or a fairy dust that makes it all better. Very few, if any, preachers preach obedience and the cost of following and being a servant of Christ. They read, if you love me, keep my commandments by Jesus. It's just another nice Bible verse. Get them saved at the easiest way possible. That's, that's what grieves my heart. Faith with grace is all that is preached. Righteousness is a bad, unreachable word. Righteousness. Walk righteously. Oh, Marty, you can't do that. You can't do that. God commands us to. There's so many verses on that, guys. Why hasn't Jesus set us free from sin, the power of sin? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Then they'll say, oh, I'm just human. Well, Jesus was human, too. We're going to stand before Jesus because he walked the road. He walked that narrow path. He climbed the rocky road and made it. He knows we can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Remorse for and over our one, over one sin. It is not needed because unconditional love of sinners is more important than obedience to the Father. I believe a lot of pastors and preachers and teachers are breaking the commandments of God, breaking the first commandment. They're not honoring Him and loving Him with all their mind, soul, and strength. They just leave them their ministries. They've they, they, they got it all going. They know how to run and operate stuff. Preachers do not care what God thinks or how He feels about their lives. So why should the people? Why should people? Preachers do what is right in their own eyes. I have to watch that. I've been searching out what is right in my eyes. What, what does the Bible say versus what I believe? I've changed my beliefs so much recently by getting into his word more and more. The Father has been left out of churches for years because preachers have their gifts and they build their ministries. God's blessed me and I'm going to do all this here stuff. doesn't matter if I do what he tells me or not. The age of grace is all we need. Jesus is not strong enough or have enough influence in our lives to be Christ-like. The Holy Spirit is just a words. Oh, so many people, the second you say the word tongues, they freak out. They deny the Holy Spirit. They deny His gifts. Even the Jehovah's Witnesses says you're, it's demon-possessed if you speak in tongues. It's like, that's blasphemy, guys. Matthew 5, 48. You, therefore, must be perfect means complete in character and full of age, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. People who are taught to follow deceptive, deceitful spirits will reject any idea 
of walking in obedience and blameless before God. They'll do. They reject it. So many people reject it. Marty, you're just legalistic. Hebrews 5, 9, the last one. And having been made perfect or complete or whole, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. If he's the source of salvation, why do you want to continue in sin? Why do you think you can't stop sinning? The whole thing that I see on all this and all these different teachings and all these studies is how people view sin. He does not tolerate sin. Sin will not enter heaven. Sin will not enter God's realm. It's scary, guys. It's really, really scary. And I feel like God wants me to warn people, but I keep asking him, it's like, Lord, I don't know how to do this other than make videos or, or to share stuff, Lord. Um, people are committed to what they believe and not who they believe. I believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God. I believe he set up Paul and Shankton, 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 whatever, decided that he's going to want all this in there. People go, oh, you're throwing all the Gospels. I didn't say that. Paul is there for a reason. To see if God will be followed or if Paul will be followed. He's so perfect. But it's so hard to see it. Praise God. God has left the building. That is so sad. Praise the Lord.